Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Patty Havey, and today we are going to be discussing, can I still get pregnant with a short luteal phase? A short luteal phase has been known to cause issues with implantation, difficulty getting pregnant, and today we're going to talk about what it is, what causes it, and what it kind of means for your chances of getting pregnant. So if you like our content, please subscribe, like, and follow along for more fertility facts. If you have any comments, please let them know below and let's chat. All right, so for starters, let's talk about the basics. Your menstrual cycle is made up of two phases. First, you have the follicular phase, which is where that follicle develops, and then you ovulate and you have the luteal phase, which is the second half of your cycle. And that's typically a more standard length, which is about 11 to 17 days. That is where after ovulation occurs, the egg has a chance to be fertilized and implant. After that, either a pregnancy then occurs and you don't get a period, or your period begins around 14 days depending on your particular cycle. So implantation of the fertilized egg typically occurs about six to 10 days after ovulation. And this applies to luteal phase defect for this reason. If implantation occurs six to 10 days after ovulation, we need plenty of time for that fertilized egg to nestle itself into your uterus and start signaling the body with hormones and chemical messengers that, hey, I have a pregnancy here, please don't start a period. If your body actually already starts to begin the process of having that period before your egg has had a chance to really implant and start signaling your body, hey, I'm here, we're gonna make a pregnancy now, then it kind of gets stalled and caught up in this process of an early menstruation. So this is why when your luteal phase is less than 10 days, we're really risking a fertilized egg not having enough time to fully implant itself within your uterine lining. So what causes luteal phase defect? It's kind of tough to say, and it can be from a few different things, but essentially the main problem is for some reason your body is not quite producing enough progesterone to keep that phase nice and long so that you have time for that implantation. So in order to kind of fix this issue, we want to dig in and figure out, A, why is your body not producing enough progesterone to get you through that phase? And B, what can we do to support your body, to support your progesterone production and get you through that time period, extend that luteal phase so that that egg truly has time to implant? So there's a few different conventional and unconventional approaches. A lot of women have talked about chase tree or Vitex, which is an herb. There's been some good clinical studies that have kind of shown um, by taking Vitex it, for a three month period, it actually did help to lengthen the luteal phase and help with that um, both progesterone production and women who had anovulatory cycles can be helpful. Again, it doesn't work for everyone, but some women that works really well, well for. Other women just need a little kiss of extra progesterone. A little bit of bioidentical progesterone can just help push their body just a little bit further to extend that window and really give that egg a good chance to implant. Alternatively, some doctors also like to utilize medications like letrozole or clomiphene um, because that, in, in some people's theory, helps to create a bigger, more healthy egg, which is then gonna create a bigger and healthy follicle. After that egg is released, we have a follicle left over that's called the corpus luteum, which secretes your progesterone, that whole luteal phase. And if that's nice and big and healthy corpus luteum, the theory is that it should create enough progesterone to get you through the end of your cycle. So there's three different kinds of approaches. The most important thing though, is that you're digging in and finding the root cause of why your body is, is kind of cutting your cycles a little bit short, especially on the luteal phase end. So that's why it's always good to talk to your doctor and get a good like hormonal lab workout to get a good picture of actually what is going on in your body and making sure there's not anything else at play. For some women, luteal phase happens just once in a while. And research shows that if you just have a short luteal phase now and then over the course of 12 months, it really doesn't have a huge impact on fertility. If you're someone that has a short luteal phase, so a luteal phase is gonna be like less than 10 days over and over and over again, that does tend to impact chances of conceiving. And so we'll really wanna work with a doctor to identify what's causing the issue and help to create a solution. So some other things that you can do at home to help improve any luteal phase defect issues is to number one, practice stress management. Sometimes that can throw off ovulation and really eat away at your progesterone stores. So really focusing on learning how to healthily manage stress, cope with stress, and make sure you're relaxing your body. Another example of this is also limiting your very intensive cardiovascular exercise. Exercise we always see is such a good thing, but when we're doing it in too 
high of an intensity, your body actually sees it as a stressor. Think of it like this. Your body's running from a tiger. If your body's running from a tiger, is your body going to want to have a baby? No, it's going to say, I'm running from a tiger. This is not a safe time for me to get pregnant. I'm not doing it. So a lot of times pulling back on super intense cardio activity can be helpful and focusing more on strength training or shorter kind of high intensity interval training, or even just taking a break focusing on yoga, walking, still moving your body, but not to a point where it's stressing or depleting your body. These things also can be kind of helpful with short luteal phase. So let's sum this up. Your luteal phase is super important for that last implantation phase of that fertilized egg. We really want to make sure that it is nice and long and we're not it's, it's not too short. We want to make sure that egg has plenty of time to implant before the period cascade begins. And again, this could be from low progesterone or this could be from stressors. One tip that I have is consider using a basal body temperature thermometer to track your temperature and keep a close eye on your luteal phase numbers. You really want to see those numbers continue to be nice and high after ovulation. And also those BBT temperatures will continue to be high in early pregnancy. And that's because the hormone progesterone is what actually increases our body temperature and makes your BBT be higher. So I definitely recommend using a BBT if you do suffer from or think you might have short luteal phase effect just to see temperature wise what's going on in the other half of your cycle. Um, not only is that gonna help identify a progesterone imbalance, it also can kind of help identify thyroid issues if that's looking kind of funny and we're not getting the good spike we want to. Again, we're always confirming that ovulation either with BBT, um, basal body temperature thermometers, PDG progesterone testing, or taking a blood serum progesterone level at seven days past ovulation. These are all the ways that you can dig in and investigate your luteal phase, your short luteal phase. So again, if you don't want to run to the lab, there's a lot of things that you can do at home. And of course, with that BBT, we want to be using an ovulation predictor kit to predict when that ovulation is going to come and then confirm that ovulation actually did occur after we see that BBT spike. Thanks for sticking around with me and chit-chatting about luteal phase defect. I'm hoping that all of you have wonderful success in your fertility journey. Like and subscribe, comment below, and come find us on Prima. Thank you.